Hey folks, I'm back with another video about the Milton Glaser lecture, This Is What I Have Learned. For those of you who aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, there is a link down below in the video description to the first video in the series where I set everything up. But the basic idea is that this is a lecture that I read from the graphic designer and artist Milton Glaser, given back in 2002, which consists of 10 bullet points of wisdom gleaned from his experience over the years. And I've been going through a number of these points and talking about them as they relate to uh, my career my personalized career as an SF and fantasy author. Today I want to talk about bullet point seven, which is how you live changes your brain. And the way he puts it is, the brain is the most responsive organ of the body. Actually, it is the organ that is most susceptible to change and regeneration of all the organs in the body. I have a friend named Gerald Edelman, who is a great scholar of brain studies, and he says the analogy of the brain to a computer is pathetic. Side note, I completely believe this. Back to Milton Glaser. The brain is actually more like an overgrown garden that is constantly growing and throwing off seeds, regenerating, and so on. And he believes that the brain is susceptible in a way that we are not fully conscious of to almost every experience of our life and every encounter we have. So a lot of this for me is about what we, what we take in as creative fuel especially when we're science fiction and fantasy authors. Because it's, it's one of those things where you, we're not always conscious of the things that we surround ourselves with and that we feed ourselves with. Over the past, uh, like, about 10 years or so, I noticed that there was a big shift in the kinds of things that I was consuming as far as media and reading and so on and so forth went. I was reading less fiction, and I was reading much more nonfiction. And the nonfiction that I was reading was a little bit more on the scholarly side, um, a little bit more, a little bit more stuff that would be that would be a deeper cut than, than than a lot of other cases, and the fiction that I was reading was by and large not science fiction or fantasy. It was outside of that sphere. It was um, as it was it was uh, more often than not it was fiction that was not even in English to begin with, so it was you know that much further removed from my default frame of reference. And this this was a way for me to try and see new things. And to think about things as differently as I could, as counterintuitively as I could. And I didn't even realize that I was doing this at first, but I think what was happening was that I was responding to a certain kind of mental hunger, because I would read a lot of the stuff that I was coming across, um, you know, in the mainstream, so to speak, and I would say to myself, this just, this just isn't lighting me up. I got to go somewhere else. So I started going somewhere else, and that started lighting me up. And I realized, okay, this is what I'm actually looking for. So... In, in, in Glazer's words, how you live changes your brain and, you know, how when you live a different way, you're putting different things into your brain. You're giving yourself different mental fuel. So all of this seems really important to me um, when you're writing SF and fantasy because the default mode that we have, I think, in a lot of cases is to reach for other things that are science fiction and fantasy and to learn directly from them about how to do this stuff. This is not a bad idea. You, you do want to have some idea of how things have been done in the past and what the state of the art currently is so that you don't end up um, reiterating dead cliches, for instance, or inadvertently offending people. But I also think that it's not a good idea to just use that by itself. You have to expand outside of that as far as you possibly can. And you have to do it in a way that encourages your ability to have a conversation, so to speak, with whatever it is you're encountering. We were having a conversation the other day, me and some friends, about the idea of, of the canon, about you know the classics and things like that. And one of the lines that I came out with was, I think it's important to read these things and have an encounter with them, even if the encounter mainly consists of us saying, I don't like it. I think it's important for us to form opinions about things, even if they're negative, because that way we can say, okay, why didn't I like it? And we can get more granular. Instead of it just being a knee-jerk response, we can actually unpack that and say, well, I didn't like it because of this. And then that way our, our opinion becomes that much more informed and that much more amenable to being analyzed and also perhaps fed with the right kind of food. But it's, it's harder to form opinions about things if you don't actually have the encounter with them or if the encounters that you have with them are mainly just, just about, you know, swatting them away or deflecting them. A lot of this for me is also about the fact that if we're writing SF and fantasy, um, we can't exactly go to another world or, you know, a, a far off land back in time and use our experience there to write about it. We have to work with what we have in front of us and around us. That's much harder. You know, we have to extrapolate. 
And the more different kinds of encounters that we have with things that we can extrapolate from and to, you know, the more we work that muscle, the easier it's going to get to do it, no matter what kinds of story topics or, or settings or what have you we decide to we decide to choose. So that's my that's my feeling about about bullet point number seven in the lecture, how you live changes your brain. It really has a lot to say to, to what we do in this particular field, because, you know, we want to do original things. And the more things that are outside of our, our immediate circle that we encounter with, the better our chances our originality is going to be fed in constructive ways. So I may do uh, one or two more videos about, about the Milton Glaser lecture. I didn't want to do videos about every single bullet point because some of them are less relevant than others. But I did want to do one about number seven. And until next time, I will see you.